The immune system of our body is comparable to the defense system of our country which protects our body from harmful pathogen and builds up immunity against pathogens. Now, the biggest question is, I mean the biggest question that fascinated scientists was how does the immune system develop so precisely that it has a huge heterogeneity in terms of responses and which is important because there are pathogen are diverse in order to have a, a counter attack against the pathogen the response or the there are they, they require several type of cell types that the immune system of our body requires so that is how the immune system development is very important so in this whole video i'll be talking about how does the development of immune system happens and what are the major cell types that contributes to our immune systems now i have videos for each of those cell types separately so you can watch all of them and the link would be provided in the descriptions and the whole playlist has all the collection of all the different cell types and uh, important information about them so the major site for development of the immune system is our bone marrow now especially the big bones like your humerus your femur these bones has big bone marrows and that is principally the site for immune system development and that is why bone marrow is also known as the primary lymphoid organs now generally the primary lymphoid organ term comes from the organs that kind of support the development and and uh, the birth of the immune system so inside the bone marrow if you zoom you would get a view like this and if it, even if you zoom even further you can have the specific cellular organization inside the bone marrow so there are a lot of bone marrow cells osteocytes osteoplast osteoclast and definitely the blood vessels so we would look at exactly where the immune system uh, the development of the immune system takes place so if we zoom inside the bone we would see osteoblast we would see blood vessels and in a cross section view we can understand that the immune system develops from hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell okay let's break down the term hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell so pluripotent stem cell means it can give rise to wide variety of cells and hematopoietic means low so these hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell can give rise to all kind of blood cells that is required so anything required anything related to hematopoiesis so these hematopoietic pluripotent stem cells or hscs generally are situated near the endosteal niche so endosteal niche is the specific region where osteoblast osteoclast and the uh, osteocytes are there so that niche is known as endosteal niche so an endosteal niche has different signaling molecules and morphogens secreted especially cytokines secreted which would support the growth of the colony of hematopoietic pluripotent stem cells now once hematopoietic pluripotent stem cells are differentiating and they start giving rise differentiating into different cell types they kind of move from endosteal niche to the vascular niche and from the vascular niche they would be circulated throughout the body in other secondary lymphoid organs or primary lymphoid organs itself so we just follow the fate of hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell to understand how immune several components of the immune system develops so the hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell can differentiate a little bit but still it has stem cell like properties so it can give rise to give rise to special special progenitor populations like lymphoid progenitors and myeloid progenitors and in a nutshell myeloid progenitor and lymphoid progenitors are so important because myeloid progenitor give rise to innate immune system whereas lymphoid progenitor give rise to adaptive immune system components and we, in a moment we would look at all these uh, several components and the cell types in details so the lymphoid progenitor would give rise to t cell 
I mean T cell precursor, B cell precursor, and also the natural killer cell. Now we are calling this T cell precursor or B cell precursor because they are not yet mature or they are not yet ready to encounter any pathogen or uh, the foreign substances. So they are just born. They they received some amount of training in the bone marrow, but they need to go to secondary lymphoid organs where they would be trained to detect pathogens and response against them. So, for example, T cell precursor would enter the bloodstream, go to the vascular niche, enter the bloodstream, and it would be circulated to thymus. Now, thymus is known as the training school of T cell, and here is a cross section of the thymus where there are zones where T cells reside, and there are several degrees of training that the T cell reside. T cell receive from the thymus, and once they they their training is complete in the thymus, they either commit to become a C8 positive cytotoxic T cell or they become a C4 positive helper T cell, and they from their training school they are deployed into the uh, specific base camps, which are basically lymph nodes. If we think about the B cell precursor, in the B cell precursor it has the immature B cell receptor the b cell receptor recombination has not been complete yet in this situation after several round of like changes inside the bone marrow itself b cell precursor move through the bloodstream into the lymph node inside the lymph node they form centers which are known as germinal centers so lymph node can be imagined as the army base camp where you have special barracks for t cells and special barracks for b cells the b cells reside in the germinal center where several aspects of B cell development takes place, especially the differentiation aspect takes place there in the lymph node. And few important events are affinity maturation, somatic hypermutation, and clonal expansion of uh, the B cells, which all would lead to betterment of the B cells such that they can combat the pathogens in a better way. Apart from T cell precursor or B cell precursor, which are derived from the lymphoid progenitor, one more important thing is one important cell type is natural killer cell. So they are the cold blood killer in the immune system. So they would kill any pathogen which they would find a threat to the system. So they are pretty important in terms of tumor immunity and especially the defense against viruses. Now, we talk about the other progenitor the myeloid progenitor cell. Now, literally all the blood cells are derived from this myeloid progenitor cell. So it has huge proliferative cap capacity and it can give rise to different uh, blood cells itself. So myeloid progenitor cell would form myoblast. And from the myoblast, it could give rise to basophil progenitor, eosinophil progenitor, and neutrophil pro progenitor. So each of these progenitor, which are all white blood cells, WBCs, they can further differentiate to form granular basophil or granular eosinophil. So the progenitors are there, th th their fate is determined, but still what happens is the, the granules, the granular vesicles which make them granulocytes were not yet ready in the uh, basophil progenitors. So they are also known as ban basophils or ban eosinophils. Whereas after differentiation, basophil, uh, I mean, Basophil, eosinophil, or neutrophil are mobilized to the blood capillary, and from the blood capillary, they would be circulated all across the body wherever they are required. Now, if we follow the lymphoid progenitor cell again, we would see it can also give rise to monoblast. Now, monoblast eventually give rise to monocyte, and monocyte gets into the bloodstream and circulates all around the tissue. But whenever it goes in the tissue it is now differentiates into macrophages it changes its morphology it changes its physiology and cellular aspect to become more macrophage now these macrophages are important cells in terms of immunity because they are the antigen presenting cells they are the local policemen which can uh, mount and respond very quickly now the myeloid progenitor cell can also give rise to megakaryoblast a megakaryoblast, which eventually via a sequential step give rise to platelets, and platelets are important components of blood. And since we are talking about immune system, we are kind of skipping the process of erythropoiosis, but it's good to know that the whole process of erythropoiosis 
takes place from the myeloid progenitor cell and actually RBC is born from the myeloid progenitor cell itself by several rounds of differentiation events. Now, um, hematopoietic pluripotent stem cells give rise to two branch, right? Myeloid progenitor and lymphoid progenitor. Now, one important component of the immune system is the dendritic cell. It's still not clear who give rise to dendritic cell. It turns out both lymphoid progenitor and myeloid progenitor can give rise to dendritic cell. Dendritic cell and macrophages are the key components of the immune system, a key component of the innate immune system. And it's still debated about the origin of dendritic cell. And it turns out that dendritic cells work like a bridge between the myeloid progen the adaptive and the innate immune system. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.